Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for EVE Echoes, the series that aims to stop you fitting an Omen trainer with medium snub-nosed railguns and blasted active shield tanks. Really? What's going on here? Did you even read the bonuses? Anyway. <laughs> Today, of course, we are going to be looking at the MOA. This is the last of the Tech 6 level heavy cruisers that you guys have been begging me to do a video on. So I've managed to get a hold of one of these. And humongous thanks and huge shout out to Mythicus for uh, actually giving me some really cool ideas when it came to the MOA. He's been talking to me about the process of him building his um, and putting all the fittings on it. And it's been really insightful just to get an idea of what he's thinking. Gave me a great starting point to go with and then I've just kind of expanded on there. So Thank you, Mythicus. You've been absolutely awesome. So what we're going to do in today's video is the usual. We're going to have a look at the MOA here, at its ship attributes and fittings. We'll have a look at how I would choose to fit it based on what Mythicus has told me. And then hopefully we're going to have a look at a combat demonstration along with an idea of where to progress into this ship and how to get out of it into other ships further along. Now, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you never miss a video, and let me know what topics you want to see me cover in future videos by commenting down below. If you do want me to do another ship, uh, another ship fitting guide, do have a bit of patience. Obviously, it does take a lot of time for me to get hold of that ship, um, actually fit it and try some different things, and then take it out into combat and give it a go myself. Finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, please do so by coming and joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now. That said and done, let's talk about the MOA, because I love the look of this ship. Doesn't that just remind you of the Serenity from Firefly? To me, it, it really does. There's just something about it. Obviously, it's a lot bigger. Serenity's not a cruiser, but there we go. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the MOA. The MOA is found in the Kaldari State Ship Tree. Of course, we then head across to the Cruiser Branch and all the way up to Tech 6, where the MOA is hiding in the middle. Very cool looking ship with some rather interesting skins. You've got the Exoplanet's Hunter, which makes it look dark and mysterious. The Purity of the Throne skin, which makes it look like it's trying to pretend to be in a Mars ship. And the Water skin, which is by far my favorite. Look at this thing. Nothing screams, ahoy there mateys, I am a space pirate, quite like painting a gigantic Kraken with glowy blue eyes on the back of your ship. Consider that this ship is 384 meters long. That means that that Kraken is well over 100 meters in length. I, oh, <laughs> yes, more of that please. I do also quite like the earth skin, that sort of ruddish color with the gold. It's very tribalistic. It's got a certain Sun Warrior, Aztec, Incan, or <clears throat> MOA feel to it, I suppose, um, which does work really quite nicely. And I actually use that on my Thrashers as well. Pretty cool looking skin. Anyway, enough about how the ship looks, let's talk about how it flies. Here on its attributes and fittings, you can see that it has one drone tube that can launch either small or medium drones. It's got four high slots, two mid slots, five low slots, and then two of each of the power grid and mechanical rigs. Now, as I've mentioned in all the other Tech 6 Heavy Cruiser videos, the fact that it's got four high slots and five lows does insinuate that this is all about tanking damage rather than dishing it out. Yeah, theoretically, you could put five magnetic fields, uh, the weapon power-ups, in those low slots there, and that would theoretically give you a lot of DPS, but you're kind of missing the point of the mower. If you want flat DPS, there are ships out there that are better for it. The mower is definitely a tank, and that is supported by that defense there of 12,513. Wow, big tank there. 4,504 of that alone is in shields, with 3,041 in armor and 3087 in structure. Again, definitely a shield tank. 100% we are looking at a shield tank ship here. If we scroll down a little bit further, you can see it's got a decent sized signature radius, 114.6 means there are very few people going to be missing this anytime soon. And the more I look at these heavy cruiser, uh, these, these heavy cruiser signature radiuses, the more I realize how ridiculous the, uh, the rupture actually is. Low scan resolution as well does mean it takes a while to lock on, along with a slow flight velocity of 20, uh, 239 meters per second and a warp speed of three. But those are all things you kind of get used to when you're playing as cruisers. You lock on slowly and you move around everywhere fairly slowly too. Anyway, looking at the trait descriptions, oh look, shield operation bonus, plus 4% shield resistance. Do we reckon this might be a shield tank? 
Yes, of course this ship is all about shield tanking. I do actually have levels in shield operation as well, because of course shield operation is one of those interesting skills that affects small, medium, and large ships. So I've been training that up for my shield tanks on my uh, on my frigates and destroyers, and curiously enough it helps with the mower here, which is pretty sweet. I'm happy with that. Cruiser Command, which I still haven't trained, would give medium railgun damage of 5% per level and medium railgun accuracy falloff of 5%. Now that accuracy falloff does help out if you're using either snub-nosed railguns or rifled railguns. Whichever one you go for does benefit quite nicely from, from, that, uh, from, that, bo uh, from that bonus there. Ultimately, I prefer to go for the snub-nosed simply because a ship like this is going to be up close and personal most of the time anyway. Even if you don't want the enemy ships up close and personal, they're probably going to be doing so. And yes, I'm saying up close and personal a lot. Again, find me another sentence that's, uh, that rolls off the tongue quite as easily and says the same thing. Anyway, we're getting into the realm of me talking about how I'd fit this now, so why don't we move across to the fitting window and look at exactly that. Now again, just a couple of things to mention before we go too far on this. First of all, as I said, this build is very much inspired by Mythicus, so thank you very much, my friends. You've been a great help with me getting this video off the ground. And secondly, I don't have cruiser skills, so stop complaining that my DPS looks really low. Yes, it's because I don't have cruiser command trained, nor do I have anything in medium railguns. This is purely what the ship and the numbers it themselves give me. So, for the high slots, of course, we've gone for Hustler medium snub-nosed railguns. If I'm going to be up close and personal anyway, if everything's going to be coming up to me, then I may as well utilize the fact that I don't give a damn that this only has an optimal range of three kilometers. If they're gonna be in three kilometers, damn it, I'm gonna hit them with the highest DPS weapon I have available. In this case, Hustler medium snub-nosed railguns. Four of them, to be precise. And of course, if anything gets that close as well, I am going to want to webify it. And huzzah, we're Mark 7 now. We can use Mark 7 gear. Oh my goodness, all of that loot in our hangar can finally be used. Anyway, optimal range 11.8 kilometers. Anything gets within 11.8 kilometers, I'm going to lock it down with the Mark 7 status webifier, and then I'm going to hit it with four snub-nosed railguns, just because it seems like the logical thing to do. And if you're that close as well, you may as well be draining them of some energy with a Mark 7 medium energy Nosferatu. Let's drain their capacitor and refill ours because this ship, boy, she be thirsty. She needs a lot of capacitor and that's something we're going to need to consider when we look at the rigs later as well, but more on that when we get to it. Now, if we look at the low slots, the low slots I've gone for here are, of course, a, a Kaldari Navy medium shield booster. Obviously, a Mark 7 would do just as nicely, or a Mark 5 if you haven't quite hit that point yet, but a Mark 5, any form of a medium shield booster. You're going to be taking damage to your shields. You want to be able to repair that nickety split. Going a little bit further along here, I have two Mark V adaptive invulnerability fields. Now, yes, it does say at the bottom here that there is a penalty for using more than one of this type of module or rig on a single ship. It res results in a penalty to the final effect. That means that here, rather than 27.29 plus 27.29, you'll get 27.29 plus approximately 50% of the second module. That's how it works out, and I will showcase that in action when we come to the actual combat demonstration part of this video. Ultimately, I did a little bit of maths with Mythicus's help and with some other people in the Catskill Cartel as well looking into this kind of thing. Sardoth, I think it was. Thank you again so much for doing all that research, Sardoth. Big, big help. That a Mark V adaptive invulnerability field, if you've got two of those, you are going to have better shields overall unless you are going up against explicitly one type of damage. If you know you are only going up against electromagnetic, then having an adaptive and a reactive works better. But if there is the chance of there being a second damage, type then two adaptive seems to come out on top in regards to your resistances on the subject of resistances as well then we've also uh, slotted in a basic damage control this is an excellent little unit that gives us a flat 7.97 percent dps across the uh, dps sorry resistance across the board and um, to shield armor and structure to electromagnetic thermal kinetic and explosive and that is with it cold. This can be activated to increase those bonuses by a further 800%, which means that while this is active, this ship takes no damage. It doesn't matter really what you hit it with, it takes pretty much no damage at all. But as I've said, it is a very capacitor thirsty ship, which means of course we need to put in a capacitor battery. The idea here is that, yeah, okay, if we look at the capacitor here, four minutes, three seconds with everything switched on. 
if I have the Acolyth for here as well, it means that once I hit, say, 75%, I can activate this, dump a ton of, of extra juice into my capacitor that gets eaten up whilst my capacitor's recharging. Then, as my capacitor proceeds to decrease again, I can dump another load from the, uh, from the Acolyth medium capacitor battery when it is off cooldown. And that's kind of how you go. You cycle using that. Now, for the rigs, um, again, I'm only borrowing this ship for the time being, so I do need to hand it back later. The way I would personally go is a core defense force field extender. I've gone for a prototype just because it was all I had handy. But two of the force field extenders, these just give you a flat bonus to your shields. You've got shield resistances out the wazoo so already, so you may as well make that shield as big and hard to, a slog to get through as possible. Basically, make getting rid of this shield feel the same way that doing a military assault course feels. You want to come out the end of it feeling like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that's over, or you just give up halfway and disengage, because that is quite frankly what the MOA will force someone to do with that amount of shield. Now, for the mechanical rigs, I haven't got anything here, but it's going to be a capacitor memory cell, um, and which I can never remember the name of it. The one that ultimately you're going to go for the one that makes your capacitor bigger, and the one that recharges it faster. Bigger capacitor pull means it takes longer to empty. Faster recharge means that it recharges better when you use that battery. Those are the two that you are going to want at whatever level you can get in those mechanical rigs. Yeah, you could go for flight velocity, but you don't really need it. The most important thing here, 100%, is maintaining that capacitor. Yeah, it kind of makes me sad that we can't fit a propulsion system in here. Theoretically, you could take something like the damage control off, I suppose, um, and put in something like a medium afterburner if you really feel the need to, but I would lean very heavily into that tank if I were you. That is what the mower seems to do best, and nine times out of ten, the enemy is going to come to you anyway you don't need that extra speed ultimately the enemy is going to come to you let them come to you don't go rushing at them fit something else there fit the medium damage control now as we pull up here into the middle of a tier 7 anomaly i can kind of lock onto everything start drifting a little bit close towards the gistum cyclone here oh the hurricane's actually taken a bit of damage. I wonder if someone's already been trying this one. Oh, well, no matter. We're in it now. Let's go have some fun. Now, if I activate all of the, uh, the, the two hardeners there and actually open up the fitting window, you'll see now that the defense here has shot right up. Look at those shield resistances. That's without the damage control unit on full active either. 60%, 68%, 76%, and 80%. Not taking much in the way of damage here at all. Now, as we close in gradually, you can see here taking a little teeny tiny bit of damage there from the uh, from these ships. Small amount. Let's add on that uh, that shield booster just to take that back up. Heck, actually, you know what? Just for ships and giggles, let's activate the damage control and see what that actually jumps up to. And I do apologize for the screen freezing now. I am getting a lot of lag at the moment as I'm still out at a fishing camp on the River Zambezi here in Zimbabwe. That makes for very bad signal, which does cause some rather hefty delays. But let's have a look at the defense now. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho. With that damage control active, unskilled, 57,955. My smallest resistance is 84%. That's no damage coming in whatsoever. Right, we're now within the 14k mark, so let's start putting on some of the other bits and bobs here as well. Start actually firing some shots at these guys. Um, put up that... Uh, put up the Nosferatu and start actually seeing if we can do some damage. We're still a little bit far out. The 14 kilometers isn't going to do much in the way with our snub-nosed railgun in so far as it's what, three kilometers optimal range, up to seven for the first accuracy fall off and then 11 for the third one. So I do need to slowly drift in. Let's get that shield booster active so at least we can showcase that as we do so. Rather than the orbit, I realise I'm now orbiting at too far because I'm still set from my frigates earlier. But oh well, let's close that gap now, move in closer to that Gistum Cyclone. Heck, let's just go for a full-on approach at this point in time, and then orbit at the zero. Now that we're not lagging as much, we should start to actually do some damage as we get within the 12 kilometer region. There we go. Now we're in 12 start getting those rail guns to actually hit the drones just sort of firing limply at the sides at the moment not much really going on there now we're at nine kilometers the rail guns should be coming into a bit more of an effect but again remains to be seen as we close in still not taking much in the way of damage though at all here we are now we're at the five kilometer margin i am going to also activate that battery just to top things up here and there we go 
Cool. So at this point in time, you can see the big point I'm trying to make here is I'm not really taking much in the way of damage at all. Now, if I actually had railgun skills, things would be a little bit different here. I'd be doing a bit more damage thanks to having medium railgun skilled or indeed cruiser command giving me the bonuses there too. That would allow me to just do a little bit more damage here, but we are gradually making a dent through things. It's just, it's slow when you're not skilled into it. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make here is I'm still sitting at a comfortable 60 capacitor here. Um, I'm at full shields despite the fact that I've got a, a two battle cruisers and a cruiser firing at me. And I'm just taking almost nothing in response. And it doesn't really matter how long it takes me to kill these three. Ultimately, I will kill them in time. Uh, you know, eventually I will kill them as long as I survive. As long as I survive, you kind of win by outlasting your opponents in this kind of situation. I'm comfortably up close and personal. Now we are going to move out. Let's see if the orbit makes a difference if I change that up to the 3 kilometer mark. Just to see if uh, I'm missing those shots slightly. There we are. We're now pulling away to the 3k mark. And see if that does a bit more damage then with those rail guns. No, it's about the same either way. They've got really good tracking. Snub-nosed rail guns, one thing I have to say is they do have really good tracking. Let's pop up the uh, the battery there again, and you can see that we're now still sitting comfortably, in this case 90-odd percent, but that's with the battery active. When the battery comes down, we'll see what that sits at. And we're barely losing any capacitor overall, but I'm taking nothing in the way of damage. In fact, I could probably turn off the uh, the shield booster for a little bit of time just while we go through there. And there we are. There's the Cyclone's shields down. Oh, no, no, there's not the Cyclone's shields down. I thought that was the Cyclone's shields down, but of course the Cyclone has a shield extender. Because of course it does. Cyclone's a tanky. Why wouldn't it have a shield extender? And we're just going to slowly, slowly, slowly trickle our way through that shield extender. You can see the actual shield there, the white bit, filling up gradually. Let's activate our shield booster again. 61%, 62% there on the on our capacitor. Things are going nicely. There we are, Gistam Cyclone. We are finally out of its shield, and we're going to start doing some damage to its armor and then down to its hull. Again, I hasten to add, I have no skills at all in medium railguns or in cruiser command, which would boost the railgun damage of this particular ship. If you have those skills, you are going to do so much more damage than I'm doing right now. The point I'm trying to showcase is that even without the shield booster active, I'm taking pretty much no damage at all. And that is what this ship is good at doing, taking no damage. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and go all the way through this Gistam Cyclone, the Hurricane, and the Bellicose. That's going to be a long, dull video of me gradually whittling them down. But with, honestly, with the right DPS skills there, you are going to be doing a lot more damage than I'm able to put out now. So if you like the look of the mower, where would you go from here? Well, obviously the first place to look is directly above it at the mower guardian. This is kind of the same thing as the mower, but rather than it just being you being as tanky as all heck, you're also spreading that out across your friends using the shield field module. Now, if you've watched my video on the Thrasher Guardian, you'll understand how a shield field module works. Basically, it puts a whopping great big bubble around everyone and any shot that hits that bubble instead of hitting the target ship, hits your shields at a reduced value. So if they were going to do 100 damage at, at, at the nearby Thrasher or whatever, instead they're only going to do 50 damage to your shield. And so you can centralize all of that damage, have someone sitting behind you in something like an Osprey keeping you alive, and everything under that bubble stays alive for absolutely days. Now, being a railgun ship on the mower as well, you can, of course, start to look at something like the Ferox. This gets bonuses to medium railgun optimal range and accuracy as a standard part of it, plus advanced medium railgun upgrade gives you extra damage and optimal range, and Battle Cruise Command increases your scan resolution, allowing you to lock on that a little bit faster. Obviously, if you're using the mower because it's a railgun ship, not necessarily because it's a tank, then the Ferox seems like an obvious place to upgrade to. Ultimately, it is a battle cruiser. So if you're going to go there, I wouldn't bother like going too deep into Cruiser Command. Maybe get Cruiser Command up to level 4 just to get those bonuses to Railgun Damage and Medium Railgun Accuracy fall off in the meantime. But certainly you can look at the Ferox as somewhere else to go from there in regards to Railguns. Now, there are railgun ships under the Galente Federation tree, like the Thorax. Um, I'm going to be completely frank, though. If you're using a Thorax, the Thorax is an armor 
tank. It's basically a mower, but using armor instead of shields, and I just don't see why you ever would. Stick with the mower. If you're looking for railgun cruisers, the mower is pretty much your only one for quite a stretch of time. Go with that, then move up to the, uh, to the Ferox when you hit the battle cruisers with the mower. If you like the concept of being one heck of a shield tank and just taking a ton of damage whilst you uh, hit back with your railguns, then the mower is an excellent ship for you. And if you want to kind of pretend that you're flying Serenity, come on, look at it. Clearly there's a reference here. It has to be CCP. I'm, 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 I'm focusing on this way too much, but it does look like a Firefly reference. It's a very cool looking ship um, that deals out a lot of damage and takes a lot of punishment as well. Excellent for soloing encounters. You can do tier eights quite comfortably with these things. Ultimately, again, I am running on slightly lower skills, so I'm not quite as effective with this as I could be. If you're skilled into this kind of thing, then yeah, the amount of damage it can do and the kind of content that it can do is insane. And they are excellent little ships that can really, really take a beating. Hopefully that's given you some inspiration to try one out if you were considering it. Hopefully it's given you some ideas on fitting it if it's a ship that you've been aiming for. All the way though, let me know how you get on. Do of course, as usual, I love it when you guys do this. Find me on Twitter put out a, a hashtag CSKL with some screenshots of the ship you're using or perhaps some kill mails that you've got with that kind of thing. Let me know how you're getting on, folks. I really do love chatting with you and hearing all of your adventures in New Eden. Otherwise, though, thank you ever so much for watching. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.